The majestic Sierra Nevada mountain range, it's California's largest natural reservoir of water for municipal and agricultural users, yet it stands to lose from 40 to 90 percent of its snowpack by the end of this century. Halfway across the world, rapidly retreating glaciers have spawned unstable reservoirs that threaten to burst and flood villages in the Himalayas. Different problems with water, but for the same reason, global climate change. These changes have created hazards which will adversely affect the populations of California and Asia, such as floods, increased intensity of wildfires, as we've been hearing the last couple of days, and deterioration of ecosystems. Policy decisions will need to be made at the regional level to deal with these impacts. Britain's Lord Julian Hunt reading from the conference declaration after scientists and policymakers spent three days exploring regional water issues and parallels between the Himalayas and the Sierra Nevada mountains. The workshop was organized by the University of Cambridge and UC San Diego with support from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. We've been meeting over the last uh, two and a half days Uh, discussing aspects of water availability in California and in Asia. The workshop took place at UC San Diego's Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and Scripps director Tony Hamet drew attention to what he called one of the most pressing issues facing our planet. And that is how climate change is affecting the availability of water and our water security, and how we can use our growing understanding of regional climate change impacts to better manage our precious water resources. The conference declaration called for a coordinated region-by-region response to growing water scarcity. A major failure in any one region of the world will have serious global consequences. Global warming and particulate pollution are raising air temperatures and boosting the light absorption of snow and ice, reducing natural supplies of water. In Asia, Himalayan glaciers supply more than one billion people with drinking water, Yet, glaciers in the region are rapidly, actually also accelerately retreating. And about 70% of them will be disappearing at the end of this century. A more immediate hazard is the formation of potentially dangerous lakes produced by thawing glaciers. Often, uh, including large amount of ice, it can break and cause catastrophic flood, destroying almost everything it meets as it as it flows downstream. And we call it glacial lake outburst flood. This is bad kind of water. For California, the hazards are different, notably less of the snow that stores the water that much of California depends on. Where will that go in the future? The projections are that that snow line goes up. And Mount Shasta conveniently fits the little cartoon that gives you an idea of this increase in elevation of snow. And that means we lose the storage capacity. UC San Diego's Sustainability Solutions Institute organized the conference, building on Scripps Oceanography's leadership in climate change research and the computing and visualization savvy of the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology. We're going to have to work at much higher resolutions of data than we have in the past. Cal IT2 Director Larry Smarr points to high-resolution NASA images of the western U.S. and Himalayas displayed on the Institute's 286 million pixel hyperspace wall. Uh, You can see actually how similar they look. Uh, If you imagine the green to the south is uh, being fed by that melting white, uh, and that if that white were to go away considerably, uh, you can see what a major impact it would have on the food growing capability and on the people's lives uh, that are in those areas. What you saw today was the beginning of the next stage in the development of climate change science, regional impact assessments. So I have a vision that one day there will be assessments as successful as California's has been around the world. We can't see our way to the end of how we will adapt to these vast problems that we have outlined. but we did see our way to the beginning. Participants in the workshop pledged continued cooperation. In the fall, Cambridge will host a companion workshop focused on African water problems, and declarations from both conferences will be presented at the 2009 Forum on Science and Technology in Society in Kyoto, Japan.